I have an iPad 2 or iPad Pro 12.9 second generation here and uh, what's been happening is we've only seen a few of these but what's been happening is that the backlight I'm assuming this is probably a big backlight filter and then uh, there's a touch filter over here somewhere where is it I'll take tape off but there's a touch filter over here somewhere uh, I don't know where it is it's over here somewhere I think it's this one right here yeah, I think that's it. So, touch filter blows, but in the second gen, you also have a, a really bad explosive backlight blowout as well, uh, right here. So, when that happens, then the connector blows as well. So, it seems like the fix is to replace touch filter, replace the backlight filter, replace the connector. And... These connectors are not the easiest to get right now, but uh, I do have a trick which I will not reveal. Hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm just gonna remove this connector and replace it, and we will. I'm gonna put a little low melt on it, uh, just because I don't want to use too much heat on this thing. So I'm just gonna put a little low melt, just a little bit, whatever. Not going to do anything much. I'll probably just put on the ends, really, since the ends are probably going to be the hardest to get off. Alright, I'll just do the ends, whatever, and then I'll just heat it up. As you can see, it's heavily protected here, because I don't really want to burn anything, and I, I don't... So... 400 degrees Celsius with airflow of 17 on my quick 861 DW. So when I'm replacing these connectors, I really just want to get in, get out. Uh, meaning like, uh, you don't want to be leaving your hot air station here very long. And I really don't want to disassemble this logic board, even though you can if you want, but pain in the butt. And it's probably going to take you an extra hour or so, probably. So just do a little low melt just to ease off the, because the end pads are probably going to be the hardest to get off, really. But once the solder melts, it's, you're just going to be able to lift it off pretty easily, I think. Should be able to, at least, in theory. I don't think I, I probably should have put low melt on the, Pads too. So I'm just gonna move my tip a little closer because it's not really coming off that e it's not quite melted yet. This lead free solder it seems like it's pretty it's pretty tough. Meaning the melting temperature is a little bit higher than yeah, let's just get a little closer. I'm just gonna get a little bit closer until I see shiny solder. My fingers are burning too. So it's definitely hot as fuck. Okay, so there it goes. Try not to disturb any of the components surrounding it. Try not to rip any pads. So I think that's really about it. Uh, I probably could. I probably should have just put some low melt on it. I think that would have made it a lot easier to get off. Okay, so that's it. I'm done. I, you know, when I say in and out, you don't want to like. Even though I had it on there for quite a long time, uh, you, you don't really don't want to just leave it on there for too long because then you, you don't know what's going to overheat and stuff, and especially with something new like this. So I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna drench it with flux and then get rid of the old the old lead free uh, lead free melt. So I'm using the the new VS 213A. It's not really even new. I think I think it's been around for a while actually, but it just I guess it hasn't really been promoted. So so this is you know the this is the the lead free pay, uh, lead free solder that's on here and then mixed with a little bit of low melt that I put on. So I'm just going to remove all this stuff with a little bit of wick, and I put, always put it in between my tweezers because it's the easiest. 
and then and then that's it really uh so clean it up clean up the old flux clean up the old flux here and and then you can tin it again with uh uh, I can tin it again with some 6337. Um, so 6337 Kester is what I use. Yeah, I just kind of put it on the my bent tip here. Good blob of it, but not too much. Well, I'll probably just leave this here actually. Okay, so. So the ground pads are going to be a little bit harder to kind of manage. You don't really want to put too too much because you don't want the you don't want the bridge. Just make sure you have sufficient flux, you know. And you you kind of want to just comb it. And you don't really want to put a whole lot of solder on it. Just just enough to wet it so that when you put the connector down, uh, the, the the solder will flow nicely, you know. So that's really about it. So that's it right there. This may be a little too much, so I'll take some off here. Take some off there. Okay. So that's it. I have my new connector here somewhere. I had it here somewhere. I don't know where it is now. Dang it. Where did my connector go? Dang it. Shit. Well, that's not good. I damn lost my special connector. Uh, that's not good. Alright, let me pause it and look for my connector. Alright, I found it and it was on my shorts. Ridiculous. That's after I took a new one out. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so this can be a pretty straightforward connector up here. I don't have a whole lot of time here, so I may have to stop midway and uh, finish up another day. Um, so, let's see. So yeah, this is pretty very 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 straightforward connector up here. So um, you really just want to tack down the ends first, like always. So maybe I'll just do that first. So lots of flux. Uh, just make sure the That's actually kind of easy uh, because they have tabs for you to tack down the ends of it, and just make sure you have, you know, uh, room on both sides. Plenty of flux. Did I say that already? Uh, this is actually going to be easy because it's got these pins on the end of it. Okay. Okay. So there you go. That looks pretty good, and then we'll do this end as well, so that it sits flat. You want it to sit as flat as possible. So I'm just going to kind of push down on it a little bit, just make sure it sits down flat. Okay, so that's good, and then we'll just start going town here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I think both of these must be ground because for some reason it just keeps bridging, and it's really hard. So I'm gonna have to use probably. You know what? I'll just do it right now. But I'm I'm gonna have to use some uh some wick here to get it. And then I'll just redo it because I hate it. I should probably put a little more flux on it, but get rid of the bridges. And more flux. Just fucking flood it. Well, that's a little too much flux. But it's okay. I mean, I'm having a tough time melting this right here, with, even with my tweezers. There you go. Alright, I think I'll just leave that. 
it's not pretty, but all right. So now let's get back to business here. Um, these are really close together, so I think I'm just gonna do this. These first four pins must be must be ground or something because I'm having a hard hard, hard time soldering. Probably because my tips are freaking dull too. Alright, I need to get my tips a little bit closer, so I'm just gonna move it a little bit. Bear with me. Ugh, I need to get out of here. Uh I think it might be time for some new tips, man. This is not working too well. Dang it. I think I might save this for tomorrow. Unfortunately. Let's try it one more time. Basically, I just kind of rotate my tips until they're somewhat even. Kind of pressed together. That'll make things a million times easier. But when the tips are dull, it makes it kind of like almost impossible. So. Maybe I can just do one tip. Let's try that. It's not working either. Dang it. Trying to avoid getting another tip. But that's pretty dull, so I don't even know if I have any more of the C105s. 101. I'm putting on a show here, aren't I? Display of greatness. It's probably not going to work either. All right, I'm going to come back and do this. This is this is not working too well. I'll be back. All right, I was able to kind of find a way that works, so I just uh, started. I did one side already, and I'm going to do the other side now. So basically, the top tip is longer than the bottom tip, so I'm able to get a nice little shiny joint if I just kind of tilt it a little bit. There you go. It's important to have some good tips. 
Probably should just get new tips, but I don't think I have any right now. They are on order. So this will work though. Let me go a little closer. So you see a little gold sticking out. You really just want to see that gold disappear and, and turn into shiny. So there we go. And I just kind of use my tweezers to push, push a little bit, and then just keep going. Uh oh, there we go. Walks lots of flux, and it'll prevent bridging. Hopefully. I think I really just need a new tip, but goes okay I think we're good so I'm gonna test this another day just because I need to get the hell out of here I'm bringing late as crap but that's what it's supposed to look like right there and this is the new VS213 flux that I was talking about uh, I washed it cleans up a lot easier than the old stuff So I'm going to check all the pins uh, tomorrow, and I'll come back to this video. So I think we're good. Good to go. So I just need to replace that backlight filter and then the touch filter. Said I'd do it tomorrow, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now. Make sure loose pins. Yeah, it all looks really good actually. This side maybe not as good, but that's actually pretty good. I mean, this is empty right there. Eh, it looks all pretty good, actually, so I think we're good. Just gotta replace this and then this. This one's definitely fried. I think this one's actually okay, but. Alright, we'll be back. Okay, I'm not really sure where I left off, uh, but I know that I need to do two things here. Uh, that doesn't even look good. I don't know what happened here. Anyways, I just need to clean this up a little bit. Uh, I don't know how that kind of happened right there. Um, anyways, I need to replace this backlight filter. I need to replace this backlight filter, which I already have the backlight there, and then I need to replace the touch filter, so I'm just going to do that real quick. I think the back, backlight filter is actually testing fine, but I'm going to replace it anyway because it's it's visually it is burnt and um, it's not going to hurt to replace it. So
And then this is the touch filter right here. I haven't even tested this uh, iPad yet, so I'm hoping after I replace all this stuff, everything's gonna be fine. This one is. This one tested bad, so this one's definitely dead. Um, Um, so what am I using for these values? Uh, for the touch filter, I'm using a, I'm using something similar to the 6S backlight filter, but it's rated at 400, 450 uh, milliamperes versus I think 350 for the 6S. So, so this is essentially iPad Air backlight filter. Um, nobody has any schematics for these things, so we're we're all just really just guessing here. Um, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably higher milliampers because you know the LCD is bigger and requires a little more power. So, so that's what we've been using in terms of backlight filter. You know, this is a standard standard backlight filter for pretty much all these iPads, which is the same as the I think the iPad 3.4 backlight filter with the big backlight. I think it's a 0402 package. So that's what I'm using for this, and that seems to be working. That's pretty much what we use for all of them. And then I just need to get this little piece of solder out here. Where's my little pick at? Dang it. Signature? Okay. I might just leave it in there because it looks like it's... Oh, I was going to say, hold on a second. I'll just... Alright, so I'm trying to get... There's like a little bit of a solder ball in here, which probably won't make a huge difference, but I just don't want that thing floating around, and I'm having a hard time getting it out, actually. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can just kind of go like this or something, and... I think it'll be okay in there, but, you know, you never really want to leave... There. Well, why am I having such a hard time getting it out? Well... You guys didn't see it or no? Should probably just stick my iron in there. <laughs> That's so annoying. I don't want to mess up the pins or anything. Maybe better to leave it in there. Dang it, that sucks. So I don't know, maybe I'll just leave it in there. Because I don't know of any other way. This is the sharpest stuff I got right here. I don't think this this is gonna melt stuff. So I, well, maybe I can kind of do this very gently. I better not. <laughs> uh, hmm. I think I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, a little bugger. I'm gonna break this connector. Watch. I'm trying to get this little piece of solder out. There you go. Maybe. There it goes. Oh, uh, there it is. It's actually a pretty big piece. There you go. This little piece of shit. Okay, that's done. Ah, <sighs> everything is good to go. Um, let me just clean it up a little bit. Then I'm just going to do some quick tests here. Just diode mode. From the old first generation, um, you know, this this was at point 0.3, I think, backlight side. So I'm going to make sure that it's point 0.3 on both sides, which it is. And then this one should be at point 0.15 on both sides. So point 0.159, point 0.159. Okay, so we're good to go. Um, now I'm going to test it, and hopefully everything is good to go. From here on out. So I replaced the connector, replaced the backlight filter, and the touch filter. And these screens are ridiculously expensive. They're three hundred or two hundred three hundred and thirty dollars each. Three hundred and thirty dollars each, man. So if you can get your hands on a test crack screen, you might want to do that.
Okay, let me switch to the other camera. What the hell, man. Okay. You guys even see this or no? Let's see if it turns on. It's a good sign right there. Um, let me just do this so you guys can see the Apple logo. Okay, and then once it boots up, I'm going to test the touch, and then if that works, then I will call it a day, really. I think that's it. Uh, do I not have any screws for this thing? I don't think there were any screws sent with this, so... They just sent the... the frame and the logic board with no screen, no home button or anything like that, so... Uh, so I won't be able to test that. Well, touch is not working still. Hmm. That's not good. Let me just kind of... Uh touch is not working. I think it's probably the screen, I think. It's gotta be the screen, right? Alright, let me take a look at it under a microscope again because this is not good. So I think let's see, let's take a look at the screen real quick. So this is straight out of Mobile Centrics right here. Uh, I'm I'm st I'm really just starting to get really disappointed with Mobile Centrics because they're great at warranting their stuff, but boy does their do their screens or their screens starting to suck. I don't know. Does anybody else think that? I mean, they will take warranties back left and right quickly without hesitation. But I don't know about you, but I'd rather just not have a bad screen to begin with. You know? Oh, actually, okay, so. This flex right here, which is actually a digitizer, was actually disconnected for some reason. So that's probably why touch wasn't working. Um, looks like they just kind of popped this in without actually connecting this, which is kind of weird. And then this doesn't even look like it's like 100% in, so I'm going to see if I can push this in a little bit. I'm going to flip these tabs down, and then I'm going to click it in. I'm going to click this in, and hopefully this will work now. Okay. So... Let me try it again. Alright, so it's booted back up and oh no. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so touch is working again. I'm just gonna drag an icon around this whole thing, make sure everything is good to go. Looks like it is. The backlight's in full capacity here. What the hell's going on here? Alright, let me just, uh, what the hell happened? Uh, now I gotta push the home button, but. No! Hmm. Wish I can get access to the settings somehow. Setting. I'm gonna turn on. System touch. Okay, now let's just drag. Okay, everything's good. Backlight is golden. Looks like the screen is golden. Okay, so that's it. This is game over. Uh, backlight touch connector repair. Yeah, it looks like the iPad Pro 12.9 second generation. Looks like this is going to be the problem uh, ongoing, so you might want to stock up on some connectors. Um, uh, I think we're probably going to start selling them in our store soon. So if you want to buy them, you can buy them from our store. You can send it to us. Um, and remember that I won't be answering too many questions on YouTube anymore. Um, go, we have a forum now. So if you have any questions, go to microsoldering.com, click on forum up top, and push your questions there. I will personally answer every single one of those questions. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching our video. I just wanted to point out a few things. Um, number one, we have an online forum now. If you go to microsoldering.com, click on forum up top, you'll see that um, 
you can post your questions here. Um, we get a ton of questions on YouTube and they're scattered. So my goal is to create this forum so that uh, people can post their questions and I will personally answer every single question that there is that is posted on this forum. So go there. Number two is we have a online micro soldering class. Um, we've had hundreds and hundreds, maybe a thousand customers now or something like that. But it's three and a half hours long. Um, goes through just about everything. We're, we are working on adding subtitles to it and we are looking at adding some more information. So it's 99 bucks now. Uh, we were selling at 200, I think, or something like that, and we were selling separate courses. But every, everything is combined in one course now. It's 100 bucks. Uh, go through our link to buy it. Otherwise, it's 150 bucks. So if you have any questions, let us know. We will answer answer them all uh, through the form. All right. Don't call. Thanks.